I got a fever, and the only cure is more cores. <laughs> so pretty much that's just Threadripper for Pro, right? I mean, come on. Well, you know what? I'd probably settle for uh, more clock speed as well. Threadripper Pro. I don't think anybody was expecting AMD to come out with Threadripper Pro. They partnered with Lenovo. Lenovo got the exclusive for almost a year, give or take. So Threadripper Pro sits in between Threadripper and Epic. It's even more like Epic than Threadripper. You get eight memory channels. Now you only get one DIMM per channel, so you have less overall memory capacity on Threadripper Pro. But when I say less overall memory capacity, I mean theoretically like two terabytes. That is an impressive amount of memory capacity. Remember, Threadripper tops out at 256 gigabytes. Now we've reviewed Threadripper, and 64 core Threadripper for certain kinds of software development workloads is an unmitigated monster. 64 core Threadripper Pro is even more of an unmitigated monster because you've got twice the memory bandwidth, potentially. Uh, yes, if you're running error correcting memory, you're not gonna find registered ECC memory running at 3600, but the availability of registered error correcting memory running at 3200 is pretty good these days. And 3200 is basically what this supports across the board. Now, when you get into it on the memory side of things, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, there's load reduced DIMMs, registered error correcting memory, and you know quad rank potentially, and not all of those are supported. So you have to refer to what AMD is supporting specifically and the qualification list for your motherboard. And there's, there's some I's you wanna dot and T's you wanna cross because if you're doing what I did, you're DIYing it. You're not buying that ready to go Lenovo system. I've got up for testing the 16 core, the 32 core and the 64 core monster Threadripper Pro CPUs. And if that's our royalty, our, our most honored deity, what sort of chariot are we going to have to carry that? Well, that's going to be the Asus WRX80 motherboard. It's the Sage variant. And this is probably the nicest motherboard that I have ever owned. At the rear IO, literally everything is 10 gigabit, except for the things that are 20 gigabit. Yeah, all the USB ports, they're, they're, all, they're all 10 gigabit. Not only that, this motherboard, like most server motherboards, has IPMI, so you can remote manage this motherboard. It actually has an onboard VGA controller that's part of that IPMI solution, and you're gonna wanna remember to disable that with this slide switch underneath the chipset uh, if you intend to use an add-in GPU that's not fully UEFI compatible. If you need the, the CSM module, you gotta turn that VGA off, otherwise you can have some weird edge cases where you're trying to boot up Linux and it's like, whoa, I don't understand what's happening. It's fine, it's completely fine. If you have a UEFI supporting GPU, when you plug that in, it knows to make the UEFI GPU the primary GPU, you're not gonna have any trouble, but just be aware of that, because at first I was worried, I was like, I don't understand. But I used the IPMI to log into the system, even though it didn't work, and troubleshoot, because it'll show you voltage and control, you can remotely power on the system, you can remotely control the system if you only have that VGA console, Otherwise, you need to redirect to a serial port or something like that so that you can, you know, <laughs> run a TTY on a serial if you're running Linux, basically is what I'm telling you to do if you need that for the IPMI, because it'll support that really well as well. Now, in terms of performance differences, okay, Threadripper versus Threadripper Pro. Well, there's a cost difference there in just the CPU of about 35%. It's a 35% price premium. What do you get? Well, double memory bandwidth, like I was saying, and depending on what your workload is, that can really be worth it. Now for visual effects workloads, yes. We need to revisit visual effects workloads, real world visual effects workloads, but Threadripper Pro is a monster, even over regular Threadripper, for a lot of those workloads. And part of the reason is the increased memory bandwidth. Part of the reason is the increased memory capacity. Being able to run 512 gigabytes, which, and I can't believe that I'm saying this, 512 gigabytes of memory is kind of the sweet spot for a VFX workstation these days. 16 gigabyte DIMMs are not insanely expensive. 32 gigabyte DIMMs are not insanely expensive. 64 and 128 gig gigabyte DIMMs. Okay, those are getting into more expensive territory, but if you're rocking 32 gigabyte DIMMs, you got eight channels, that's a lot of memory to be able to run in your workstation. It is, it's, a, it's a fantastic amount of memory. Combine that with storage, 
that motherboard comes with a four up NVMe, you know, hyper M.2 card. So you can just throw in four M.2 on this one PCI Express add-in card, throw that in your machine. And if you're using really fast SSDs, you're talking about being able to do 20, 30 gigabytes per second on that storage array. And the rest of the platform can definitely keep up with that. Even the ethernet is 10 gigabit ethernet. That's a dual Intel X550, 10 gig solution right on board. Also on board this motherboard, you got three M.2 slots. So that's basically seven M.2 right out of the box. If you're gonna go crazy with storage, just pick up another Hyper M.2, eight NVMe, I mean, who's counting? It's, it's fine. At that point, you can clear 11 million IOPS on this platform, no problem at all. Especially with those higher speed PCI Express 4 NVMe, like the Keoxia, the CD6 and the CM6, depending on what you're looking for, have some different IOPS and performance characteristics. Those are in the U.2 form factor, so you would wanna use this in a case that has the U.2 option. The case that I use for this platform, because it's got a lot of nice airflow, is a Fractal Meshify 2 XL. I also went with a custom loop cooling solution for this from EK. I'm actually recycling it from another previous Threadripper build, and all of that fits in this case with ample room. And, you know, as you can see, I've gone crazy with the Tesla V100 and an older Radeon card, and also a 6800 for VFIO pass-through. So I can run all the virtual machines here. I've actually got a total of seven slots and most of them are blocked by heat sinks. So this is maybe something I need to revisit. Maybe I can do a new AMD Threadripper edition of, uh, you know, seven somethings, one something else because 512 gigabytes of memory divided by seven clients and 64 cores divided by seven clients and GPU pass through and NVIDIA is warming up to GPU pass-through because they've recently updated their drivers to allow pass-through without erroring out because of code 43. Thanks, NVIDIA. That's, uh, that's why Jensen's, you know, we're, we prayed to Jensen and he answered our prayers. It's, a, it's an exciting time. So this was a fun build and a, a sort of a fun first look at Threadripper Pro. There's actually so much to talk about with Threadripper Pro, I can't really fit it in one video. I can give you a sort of a preview, a first look at some of the benchmarks that we've done with the Ferronix test suite, if you wanna check that out in the link below. It's sort of some mind bending numbers. Yeah, the 32 core system here goes you know, toe to toe with like the uh, Xeon 3175X with the 4.5 gigahertz overclock. It's not pretty. The 32 core Threadripper Pro is and a whole other universe of performance. I mean, I mean, I know Skylake X is getting kind of old, but the 3175X is a monster of a CPU, and it's 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 really something that it's obsolete this quickly in the ecosystem. And these are Zen 2 Threadripper Pro. We've also got Zen 3 in Epic CPUs, so we know that Zen 3 Threadripper is coming at some point. What sort of a monster is that going to be? I mean. The mind reels with this platform. So this has been a first look at Threadripper Pro. The parts are available now. If you want to build your own Threadripper Pro system and you need advice or input, come to the forums at level one. I'll be glad to walk you through it or understand what your problems are or, you know, let's get building, whether we're doing data analysis or you're a researcher or a scientist or something like that. I really think that uh, AMD's got an interesting platform here with Threadripper Pro and the future looks really bright. Now, rumor has it Intel's launching new Intel Xeon CPUs soon. New platform, new process lithography. I think they're focused a little more in the server space than the workstation space, but still, that's pretty exciting. If you do decide that you wanna go off script, it's like, no, I don't, I want Epic right now. I want the 75 F3, a 32 core, four gigahertz monster Epic CPU, but I want that in a workstation format. Well, I don't know that I would necessarily recommend that, but I am gonna do a build around the 75F3 and more of a workstation-ish configuration. And we'll take a look, we'll see. But uh, I'll give you a little spoiler. It doesn't really exactly turn out how you'd expect. I mean, if you're gonna do that, we need different motherboards than we have now. But that's, that's a video for another day. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick look and a build with the WRX80 platform, the Asus Sage motherboard, Threadripper Pro, and I'm really happy with how this build turned out. So if you're looking at doing a build like this, definitely come to the forum, we can talk options. You don't have to go custom loop cooler. You, you've got some options there, but uh, let's talk about it because there are some gotchas. Like for example, if you're gonna use the Ice Giant Thermosiphon, which is an incredible cooler and works great with 64 core Threadripper, don't recommend it for Threadripper Pro because the orientation of the socket affects how well that cooler can work. 
It'll work in a desktop configuration, but not a tower configuration. Come to the forum, let's talk. You don't know what you don't know until you know. I'm Wendell, this is level one, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.